My name is Pamela Diaz and I'm a student at the University of the West Indies, Western Jamaica campus. And we're here with none other than Mr. Kenneth Gordon. Now, Mr. Gordon, I have a couple questions for you because you just did the annual UEWJC Caramac Public Lecture. So, could you tell us what the focus of your presentation was? Well, the, um, what, I thought, what I thought was the impact um, the media had made on the process of integration. That was the concept that was um, outlined to me, and um, it's one with which I'm relatively familiar, so I was happy to do it. Okay, M more or less what motivated you to want to come and participate in the lecture? Well, I suppose at this stage of my life I'm very happy to share with people events that I think were relevant to the conditions which have brought us to where we are. These are things that I have lived, most of them. And I think um, younger people who are now making their way, some may find some of these experiences useful. So wherever I think I can say anything that is useful, I do it. And I, I'm, and of course, coming to Jamaica was an additional plus. <laughs> okay. Now, you would have played pivotal roles in the establishment of media houses around the Caribbean. So, how do you feel about the progress that they have made so far? I'm very pleased. In fact, um, all the media houses that we have assisted are today, um, I don't know if I could say thriving, but they're doing well, holding their own, playing their role. What's in, that's, that's, well, that's what's important. You see, when media houses are owned by foreigners, which was the case before, their only concern was what sort of profit they would make, and they said that very openly. And it was a business to them. This is not just a business to us in the media. We have always to weigh um, issues on the basis of the impact it could have on the country. I've lived through that because during the Black Power demonstrations we had in Trinidad, when we had information on certain things which, if we had exposed them at the time, could have accelerated the problems. We didn't, because we thought this was something to hold back because if you expose it at this time, so, so many other things could have flowed from it. And that happens almost every day in the newsroom. You have to make choices. And I think that if people, while news is news and news and you carry news, the point is there are times when you have to make a judgment call about the impact of treating a story in a particular way or not. And that's not nothing to do with politics. I'm talking about just Sometimes there are circumstances which you have to be absolutely sure about them. Um, you can't take a risk with certain kinds of stories because of what the consequences could be. Um, so that um, I, I'm, I'm happy to think that the, the indigenously owned media is playing its role. I can't say that I'm always happy with the standards, particularly in electronic media, uh, and I speak more particularly about Trinidad in that regard. I don't think the standards are what I would like to see at all. I think the standards are fallen. But the quality of the media reporting on events in Trinidad and in the rest of the Caribbean, as far as I've been able to ascertain from what I hear, is good. I think by and large, people stand up for what they believe in. They're not um, going around to just cater to the first person who asks them anything. They do their stories, and they stand behind them. So in a way, I'm very proud of the progress that the media has made in the Caribbean. Okay, good. You said that speaking specifically to Trinidad and Tobago, not more or less so, what recommendations would you make for them? For Trinidad and Tobago? Specifically. Well, I'm speaking about how people speak. I'm speaking about the, the, the unfortunate weaknesses we have in pronunciation, in style, in presentation. Jamaica is not, from what I hear, Jamaica's quality is an improvement on Trinidad's. 
from what I, what I don't hear all the time, whereas I hear it all the time in Trinidad. And that's really what I meant. But um, in terms of media reporting, I think the standard is, in Trinidad I'm talking about now, I think the standard is good. Where we fall down, I repeat, is in the electronic media, and I would love to see that increased and improved. Now, what impact do you want your lecture to have on the future media practitioners present and the existing media today? I would like them, first of all, to be informed of events. So few of them would have known anything about the Garnet Gordon mission and the role it played to Carifta. So few of them would have known about the school books program that we started. And this might make eyes be reopened and understand we can still do something like that. I mean, there have been so many things that happen all the time that younger people are, because they're not very good at recording history. So that there were five or six things today that I like to think people were hearing for the first time. And uh, it could influence them even how they shape the things they do in the future. Or <clears throat> similar things. So. That alone in itself is, is worth my while and my time. And I got a sense of satisfaction and feeling it seemed to be appreciated. Okay. Well, Mr. Gordon, thank you very much for your interview. Okay. I'm going to give you an opportunity to say any last words or any advice to media houses out there. I just spent 45 minutes giving a lot of that advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm. I believe the important thing is for the media to be committed to doing its job professionally. I believe the media offers a tremendous opportunity to people to prepare for almost any other job because if you're going to do your job in the media, probably you have to be informed. And the way you're informed is by reading, by researching, and only understanding that you can't bluff on the way on when the microphone is in front of you. And you can't compromise when issues of integrity arise. You've got to play the thing straight. And if you play it straight, you live straight. And hopefully we all do that. Mr. Gordon, as a budding media practitioner, I thank you so much for your words. And thank you so much for your time and for coming to the Caramel Public Lecture. My pleasure. Lovely meeting, lovely day, thank you, thank you.